The Last of Us Part 2 had three possibilities. It could have just not existed, leaving the first game as the perfect game with the perfect ending. Or it could have been an Uncharted type sequel, meaning a fun but also pointless adventure with a new made up conflict and occasional references to events and characters from previous titles. This second choice is the one that I had expected. Some forced sequel. And the trailers cleverly made it seem this way, with the new lady and Asian boy Ellie, ooh, kiss kiss, and then Please stop! So Dina must have died, and then shoot shoot. But what the game actually chose was the riskiest, most meaningful and impactful path. What actually released was the most direct and honest continuation of the first game. It's so honest and direct in fact that it makes two games inseparable, and in a way, it ruins the first. Ruins both the happy ending and the relationship between Joel and Ellie that was meant to last, and in the process breaks its characters. But this was the only choice. The Last of Us Part 2 doesn't just make up some new conflict, it uses and builds on the one that was planted at the end of the first game. And it fills the gaps between the two games with these well-crafted flashbacks. In The Last of Us Part 2, Ellie must learn to forgive Joel for selfishly saving her and taking away her meaningful death. But instead of sitting through the game, watching Ellie from a distance, and telling her to quit being a baby and to forgive this old man, you watch Joel get killed. And this isn't some fanservice type death to make the character meaningful, because Joel doesn't die doing anything heroic. He's brutally beaten down without a fight. And now after seeing their precious main character with whom they sympathize with for the entirety of the first game die, the player is thrown into that same ditch with Ellie, and they're like, hey, what am I doing here, let me out. And a whole another game is opened up. One that you can't beat by beating this tank to a pulp, but by changing your own mind. Learning to forgive alongside Ellie becomes the true goal of the game, and if you can't do that, then you're left unsatisfied and bitter and sounding like this. You done fucked it up! The game isn't telling you about forgiveness and revenge. It's making you experience it for yourself, both ends of the deal. Both the struggle to forgive yourself after getting revenge as Abby, and the complexity of the dilemma of whether to forgive or not and how to go about either as Ellie. Which is why even Abby's part was so vital to this game. The order of Ellie's part to Abby's then back to Ellie's is from cleanest to messiest, and after you walk around a bit as future Ellie, you share the same mixed and confused feelings as her. You don't know what to expect or to do anymore, and that's exactly what you're supposed to feel. Even if you throw down the helmet and tell Ellie to give up, the game doesn't let you go off that easy. Giving up has its consequences, and in this case, it was Ellie's PTSD, which is why it was so important to include that last effort where Ellie fails to get revenge again, except this time, she forgives both Joel and Abby simultaneously as she lets Abby go and leaves her old self behind. Even if you water the message down to simply Revenge is bad, revenge fucking sucks, revenge has all of these far-reaching consequences, everyone's getting hurt around you because of revenge, don't fight fire with fire, revenge with revenge, it's terrible. You know, you better close your windows at night because you're letting the revenge in. Hey honey, I'm making dinner, do you want a nice plate of revenge? Oh shit, we're gonna need two body bags here, it looks like these two people got revenged. The game expresses even that simple idea much more effectively than any other game or movie. Every story doesn't have to be incredibly unique. It's how the developer portrays that story that matters, which is why I can't even imagine how awful the leaks made the game seem. It's a perfect example of why you can't just take art, strip it to its frame, and put it into words. You have to be immersed and experience the context yourself. The game needs those details, these scenes, the voices, the acting, even the violence and gross choking noises. Because that's what storytelling is. And this game demonstrates storytelling so well better than I could have ever imagined was possible. But it's not just about the story. The Last of Us Part 2 nails gameplay as well. You are put into these vast open areas in which you can enter just about anything you see. The whole breaking glass to open new paths thing is done very well. There's a lot to craft and weapons feel really good. But most importantly, the game shows that there doesn't have to be this disconnect between gameplay and story. Not to pick on Uncharted because Uncharted 4 is one of my all time favorite games. But while there is this cool treasure story and lighthearted adventure, there are also these parts where you're just a serial killer. And although these portions are fun, they're easy and they don't fit the mood at all. 
but The Last of Us blends gameplay and story so seamlessly that it throws articles like these in the trash. The whole thing is made so believable. Every kill is a struggle and makes you feel disgusted as you should. Every fight is full of tension because being spotted means having to hear this and dying means having to see this. The enemies have names and care about each other. All right, over there. Mila. Your exact location can be called out. Over here. Fighting head on is extremely difficult and enemies will yell out if you're running. She's running. And because you're the one controlling the main character through these situations, the game's impact surpasses some of the action films out there in which there are just montages of easy kills, which is what makes The Last of Us Part II groundbreaking. If somehow the Lord gave me a second chance at that moment, I would do it all over again. The most crucial decision Naughty Dog made was to not let the player make any decisions. That applies to the first game and the second. You are neither the main character nor a spectator. You're an active participant living in the character's shadows, and both games have very strong points to make and feelings they want to evoke. But to let the player make some of the crucial decisions, such as whether or not to kill the fireflies or to kill Abby, waters down both of those and turns the experience into some infamous style good guy move versus bad guy move. And if you're allowed to kill Abby in that first encounter, this is what would have happened to the Metascore. The game needs you to do certain things purely because they are controversial. It forces the player to use their brain and think why they're doing what they are. This isn't your story to shape, which is what sets The Last of Us in a class of its own. A class in which it is the king. What are you scared of? I'm scared of ending up alone. Rather than providing some cheap, thrilling entertainment, Naughty Dog took those risky extra steps to take the game out of the console and to change its players' hearts. The game introduces revenge and forgiveness, but also refuses to abandon the themes of selfishness, loneliness, and affection from the first. It takes advantage of the strong foundation built in the first game and the characters are so attached to, and uses them to craft something so intricate and powerful, which is why The Last of Us Part II should be remembered forever as a groundbreaking masterpiece. Thank you.